also curated this. Uh, the Jason Hall will be up here in a minute. I uh, have a lot of incoming. I don't think we had an idea that there were so many people working in this sector. So what I really, in DC specifically, uh, I don't know, probably over 50 companies, something like that, so I think we're showing at least eight, point seven or eight or so, had a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So all of you in the room are in, not maybe not all of you, but a lot of you are in the same space. We are working for hopefully the better good of our children and our country. So I, I encourage you, especially tonight, to connect with one another, figure out what you're working on together, how you can collaborate, et cetera. I think it would be really important for all of us. So that's my mini intro. I'm going to assume you know, may not know, 43,000. If you want to find me on Twitter, you probably saw the hashtag, uh, PowerBC Tech. I think we've got, since we started that hashtag, we've got a new Mike Baranek somewhere in the audience over here. Who tweeted that thing for the first time way back, what, maybe six months ago? I think it's been tweeted at least 10,000 times now. What you might not know is that we, we used to be called Row Feeder, we captured every single tweet, which is kind of cool. We released that data previously, I think. Um, some people have matched that up into some visualizations. So, I don't know if you know much about who's here for the first time on this video. Wow, uh, 150, 200 people almost maybe. Everyone loves you. They email us every single day asking us to tell you something. So when they're going to provide value, we want to make sure we do that. The gamification sign said, hey, tell everybody 40% off the gamification workshop. Uh, in New York in September, if you want to go to that, uh, DC Tech 40 is the discount code. We'll make sure to tweet that out. Um, disrupt the thought. How many people have been to Disrupt the thought here? A few people, an incredible event, focused on mobile applications. They have their next one, September. 27th, the Washington Post. What they do is they accept applications for uh, presenting and demoing basically by September 2nd. They make other choices, so make sure you go to disruptathonsocial.com. You'll see all the information if you search Twitter or Google. Who searches Google? You'll find the link. Anyway, there's no one from Google here. Don't worry about that. Uh, Homegrown DC Week. Who's going to DC Week this year? Um, how many people have been to DC Week? It's coming up fast, but within the 100 day, what we call event horizon, right? We're falling into the zone of an unreal amount of work on our teams, tech content, our strategy labs. Um, almost, I think we're almost at 5,000 registrants. We're going to be about 10,000 people. This is all of you. It's designers, developers, entrepreneurs, social innovators, eight days all across the city. Big opening party, big conference, keynotes, more than 2,000 person keynotes happening downtown. It's going to be wild, so you want to look out for that. Uh, just search for DC Maker. The last one I want to make sure all of you keep this in mind. The next DC Tech meetup, uh, I think, will be the biggest one. We almost didn't do an August one. We're like, oh, you know, it's August in DC, who, you know, it's going to go out. This is going to be all mobile focused, right? So, all mobile application development, tablets, et cetera. Uh, we're going to do this at the Lisner Auditorium at GW, 1200 person capacity. So, bring a friend, we're going to fill that room. It's going to be really, really interesting. Uh, and just so you know, a lot of people ask, oh, how can I present? How can I submit to present? On all of the DC Tech Meetup RSVPs, there's a little link, ixdrive.gy slash DC, what is that? I can't even read that part, but I can close up. Uh, DCTM subs. So you'll just click on that link, you'll submit yourself as a presenter or a demo or a panel or whatever, and we'll be able to know, oh, they're relevant for mobile, they're relevant for, we'll do um, politics, government, and advocacy in October. We'll do the DC Week edition in November, and we'll do social commerce in December. So if you're working in any of those related spaces, or know people that are, make sure to submit so they can have a little working on. And I think that's all I have to say. This is Mr. Gary J. Hunter.
community. Then we have a really, really awesome panel following that. Then we're going to do open mic. You get a chance to stand up, say what you're working on, what you need, what you're looking for, why you're here. And then we're going to talk about where we're going to go and get some drinks afterwards. And that's it. So let's jump right in. So you've got a 
five minutes exactly. All right, everyone, so uh, we've got seven demos coming up tonight, and as Peter mentioned at the beginning of the program, we have a lot of companies that apply. We had no idea that there was so much activity in the ed tech space here in DC. So picking seven was really hard. And so for that, you know, we obviously love your real intention and engagement with these people. So we're going to ask all of all about their Twitter handles at the beginning of the presentation and really engage with them. Think about friends you know who might be using, who might be able to use their service, ask them questions over Twitter because they're all listening and they're all responding. So without further ado, here's a uh,
And then last week. Uh, this Thursday night, we're really glad that this happened tonight because we can tell you about our launch party. It's going to be at DC night at 7 o'clock. It's called a show and tell. It's a party. It's a class. It's going to be a lot of fun. Have a few drinks. We're going to listen to three from three innovative minds from DC. They have five minutes to share their brilliance from hip hop to how to like collaborate in the office with So that's it. We really appreciate uh, your time. And So one of the things I advocate is actually having teacher dashboards that they can go in 
students. An administrator dashboard that they can actually monitor the performance of teachers. Because education needs to get performance based. It should be based on tenure. It should be based on how many kids get um, school supported lunches. It should be based on performance. So, one of the graphs that we have, we have a number of uh, rich graphs here, is a map view. And the map view itself, you can essentially dive in and look at the different charts that they have. And I'm going to really quickly just show you the map view, and then I'm going to show you one other chart which I really want to I'll put focus on. So I can look at the differences between the different grade systems, and I can dive in and see the actual student performance. And the one chart I really want to show is a radar view. Like a morning star where you can see stocks, if they're small cap, large cap, you can actually take the Myers-Briggs career objectives, and you can plot student performance based on how they do in each class against those career objectives, and you can visually see how well that student is doing tracking toward an actual career goal. You don't have to base it on GPA. You don't have to base it on A's and B's. You can literally visualize how students are tracking towards a career. And that's very important as schools need to get toward a performance-based education model. Um, and that's what this product, as well as several others, are starting to focus on. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, so we have the most recent breakdown of the chalkboard, which is kind of like a wall, if you were to equate it to a Facebook wall. Oops. Cool. This happens all the time in the classroom. So we have, uh, I posted a comment as a student to uh, today's class asking him um, you know, what, uh, what page the homework was on, and David, as a teacher, responded read that to me. Uh, all kept outside of the Facebook platform, so it's completely secure. Um, we can go here, we can see the list of messages that David and I sent back and forth to each other uh, in relation to different classes. We can uh, look at the, the settings of the teacher himself, so we have, can change his profile picture. Um, the school that he's enrolled in as a teacher, uh, we can look back at his dashboard here to see the list of classes that are available in the school and the list of classes that he's a member of now. Uh, and which period those are, and we can also uh, quickly add a new classroom if we, if we desire, uh, and then add students to that classroom so that he can communicate with them uh, safely through, uh, through the utility. Um, and here we have a discussion board. So, as Amy mentioned, sometimes it's difficult to uh, get group discussions around things like YouTube videos. Well, uh, why don't we just take the YouTube video and then run it to our discussion board feature and have uh, only the students uh, as part of your class. <coughs> watch that video on their own time when they're spending uh, an average of five hours of, uh, on Facebook a day uh, as a teenager uh, and have that post discussion board to be able to communicate with you uh, as a teacher and also with other uh, students in the class around that YouTube video. So here's the big dream of Talk Talk is we want to one day revolutionize the way that homework's done. Because as of now, it's pretty much busy work and kids know it and teachers know it. So if you could automatically grade homework for a teacher, if you could basically make homework fun, because all of us have been there in middle school, we're just like, why am I doing this worksheet if I'm never going to grade it? Which, to be completely honest, we did it. Sorry. But basically, imagine that you could make an interactive art form goal, make it an awesome game, a simulation standover, a social game, share with other students, really take education into a platform that everyone already uses teachers, administrators, students, parents, everyone, and make it safe. That's our job.
kid logs in, he practices his worksheet. Why is he doing it? Like you mentioned, you know, what am I getting for this? Ultimately, is the big question. Kids are very smart. They want something quickly. Um, so you're practicing through your worksheet, and then when you're done, the first thing we do is we tell you how your student performed. So there's a worksheet they worked on. We say what you got right, what you got wrong, and the student has immediate uh, feedback on how they perform. Now this is really interesting because one of the cool things I learned while I, you know, while we work with several schools and, and folks uh, demoing our product and working with them, when a kid does poorly, he wants to do it again because he wants to improve his score. So I've heard a lot of kids say, I got 50 percent. Can I try again? Can I try again? I want to get a better score. The kids who do really well want to keep going because they have a really good score. They have 100%. Who doesn't like 100%? So I found it really interesting um, that kids wanted to approach you both. So you're, you're in your thing, you're in your score, and then the student can go back and you can review all the work you've done, how you perform, and so forth. And then ultimately, you can get prizes. And this is a cool concept. This is feedback we got from parents in terms of how we can reward students. One of the things that you'll see on a lot of websites right now is if you get 5,000 million points, you get an icon. But you'll never get 5 million points. That's, you don't tell 9 million.
in a fun, interesting, interactive way, but also matching the local private sector and unlocking those funds and bringing them to universities as well as high schools. So we actually found ourselves on a, on a core platform all around financial literacy. Obviously a hot topic. States are mandating uh, across the United States that teachers need to teach this, but not really providing the so resources to do that. So we created this six-hour curriculum around it all through the latest gaming platform, 3D interactive tools, enabling tracking for um, the teachers, and also giving them an incentive through what we call FFI certification to complete all that content and have a reward at the end. Um, so a really exciting time for us. We also um, recently acquired a company in Boston called Outside the Classroom. They're really expanding now um, beyond just financial literacy and more into things like substance abuse and prevention, digital literacy, how are kids being taught to be a good digital citizen,
goes far to five minutes uh, for our demo. And uh, up next is uh, Justin Thorpe, who's going to give us a little bit of uh, DC Tech News. Hey guys. Uh, for those of you who haven't met, I'm Justin Thorpe. Uh, I'm the developer of the Travis at Spring Technologies. And just while we transition into the panel, I'd like to give you a quick update about some of the fun things that are happening in DC. Uh, time and time again, I just run into so many people that aren't just not aware. So this, this is a great opportunity to really showcase um, some of the news that's going on. Um, first off, I just got a note about education and hack there. So if you were inspired by what you saw today, uh, really um, into some of the problems that we're talking about, if you're an education hack there that work, there is a group of technologists and developers that are getting together in September in Baltimore to, to really create create new and exciting solutions for teachers. Um, we, there, uh, here at the Tech Year, we've talked about uh, an incubator coming to DC, a uh, soon to be named incubator coming to DC, and the great news is they've actually sent a lease, so stay tuned on that, which should be a great place to.
class after I graduated because he's that popular and I couldn't even get into it. I was like, so where is anybody? Hey, anyway.
did an um, assembly deal in the last week or two with all of the major publishers about bringing content into Blackboard. Our whole goal is to really find folks that don't necessarily just want access to the Blackboard audience, but that actually really bring something of value to that audience. And so to the extent that it is making the education experience better through ease of use or creating something different that they can do within the Blackboard platform, it's really big kind of sense. It's most interesting. Yeah, what we're seeing a lot of in the market are
pretty amazing where you can take social media feeds from Twitter to Facebook, Flickr, and create your own story. And I mean, this is just new. It's not even 24 hours. I saw it live and already joined and into it. But I think there's a teaching possibility there, a learning aspect where it's not just what happened to me and what's out there, but a learning story that people could take this type of thing. So I think there's a lot of possibility where students are pretty content in the role because for all of social media's big things, it's still built upon old media. Without old media, there is no social media. And by the way, media's world has been social. Newspapers in England had empty spaces on it that people would write a comment and then they would hand it to a friend. What is that? A blog. It's comments and blog, right? So some of this stuff's new and yet not so new. Any of you guys want to riff on that? So we do next to ask this crew out here start loving it. I I'd actually disagree just slightly with one thing you said that without old media there is no new media or social media. Um, I, I, I see it from social media differently. I think social media is about communication, it's about conversation. And teaching is entirely about conversation. And what are you conversing about? Facts, ideas. So they would say social social objects.
And then I said, hey, I'll, I'll give me something, I'll post it for you, right? So there's a workaround. But they said, you know what? It's cool. I'll create my own Facebook group for this class. And then some of them ended up in the class. It's five, there's, because not everyone does it. It's five out of a thousand. What is the percentage on It's very, very small. But there's room around, and they did it for the class, and then someone kept on. The big thing I see now with the is they do, like this girl, I can't say her name. Uh, she, she, she put her last name like saying, like, Trout, which is, that's not her last name. They do these pseudo last names. But then I say, hey, when you try for a job, this won't help you. And they're all trying to figure this out as we go. But I think the privacy stuff is way, way overdone within the reason. Um, and I found that I had no real problems with it because I said it's voluntary. And if you don't want to be on Facebook, I'll post your comments for you. But think about how ridiculous it is. A student say, I don't want to speak. I don't want to tell you my name. And you know, I guess you can't keep it ready. Right? If you take this privacy stuff to the ridiculous extreme. Great strategy. <laughs>
Durability of the software tools that we're talking about is definitely the only thing we know. Uh, we actually operate worldwide, so we actually do operate in different languages and localization. I just spoke about a little bit of the summit. Um, and I've partnered with, in some instances, in Latin America and uh, in Colombia, for instance, to actually bring education to the masses and, and to do things in some different way. We certainly also operate in the UK and I'm in the UK as well, but I've heard of things and to make some more development in this other area. All right. So I think we're going to run out next. Thank you so much. Let's get around.
Feel free to join us at Flyers up here. 